That's me. <laughs> um, if you want to get in contact with me, I'm at dbrown.zendesk.com or at Varus Brown on Twitter. Um, so I want to give you guys a little glimpse into the future. Um, so I, over the API, I answer a lot of you guys' tickets. I talk to you pretty much everybody on a day-to-day -day basis on how to better use our API. So um, a lot of the, the comments and feedback and things that you've asked for, try to encompass it into this presentation on how we can make your experience with our development platform better. So uh, number one is that we're going to redo the docs so that it is in a much nicer format. It's in a much more legible way. I think the docs that we have are amazing. We provide a ton of information, especially for those of you who have uh, weathered the storm of V1 to V2. Um, I think this will be uh, an improvement to help you be more productive. I just want to kind of show you what we got in store for you real quick. Come on in. Welcome. once you get to, to our developer docs, all right? Uh, gonna have more of an informational slider. It's gonna have all the blog content so you don't necessarily have to navigate towards to the blog. Um, all of you have already pretty much, I think, signed up for the developer newsletter, right? But uh, it's gonna be just more information that's, uh, that, that's heads up uh, for you. Um, as you drill down into the documentation, uh, you'll be able to, uh, A, Search for, you know, I have some little autocomplete in the text box for, for all the endpoints. Uh, Stevie D actually built the tool. I don't know if you guys use this. It's the Zendesk API client. Um, but literally just lift the, the format from there. Uh, he does autocomplete so you can actually copy and paste commands into to this client that, I, that you can run um, uh, API commands into. Uh, but you'll be able to do, you'll be able to, to autocomplete search for uh, endpoints. Um, you'll also be able to browse uh, all of the endpoints, so no more of the, the sidebar uh, that's there. Uh, so that'll be kind of fun. Um, and one of the things I also realized is that we have a lot of information about uh, what you can do inside of the documentation, but there's not much context around it, right? So one of the, the biggest things I get about feedback is, um, you know, you tell me that I can get all the recent tickets, right? But you don't necessarily tell me actually, you know, what that what these endpoints do, we just list them there, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys, well, you've seen this probably, like you just, <laughs> I know you ask me questions all the time, um, but we just list things and there's no context. So I wanted to, to, to make sure that uh, once you go inside of an endpoint, we give you everything you need to know uh, to be productive. And then once you drill down inside of it, um, you're able to, to see you know, all of the available fields, right? All of the, avail of the available optional parameters, right? Uh, some endpoints have parameters that don't work on other endpoints. Uh, it's a very, very confusing process uh, that <laughs> I, I'm trying to do ticket deflection for myself, right? Um, which is, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, can I sort on tickets? Uh, I mean, I can sort on tickets, but why can't I do this on requests, right? Um, and there's so many things that honestly, I get confused as well, so this is actually more for me than it is for you, so I can help you guys out better, um, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, the other part of that, too, is that we want to make the rate limiting more more apparent, right? Uh, so uh, generally, you know, it's a thousand, I mean, 700, well, 200 requests per minute, um, but uh, that's not, so, and we put that on the introduction page, but nobody ever pays attention to it, right? Uh, which which kind of is counterintuitive. So anytime that you go inside of a uh, inside of a an endpoint, you'll be able to see, um, you know, who's authorized to use that endpoint, all right? So some of them have some of the endpoints that we have have agent and admin restrictions, right? You'll be able to see what the rate limits are uh, directly from there, all right? Um, the response format is all JSON, but you know, just there to to make it a a, a list of three instead of two, all right? Um, the other cool thing about this will be. You'll be able to actually try out the, uh, the, the commands inside of the endpoint itself. So, um, and you'll be able to, to you know, put in your username and uh, put in your authentication credentials and then actually try out 
uh, your uh, whatever the command is against your data. Uh, that's going to take some uh, <laughs> some reconfiguration, or as more told me today, it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting, dude. Uh, so, so, uh, but we wanted to make this a lot easier for you, for you guys to, to be able to, to interact with our API, and also uh, you'll be actually be able to see. Uh, what this code would look like uh, inside of various languages. Uh, so no more curl calls. Uh, I mean, that'll be there, but you know, a lot of you, a lot of people don't like interacting with curl. You want to be able to see. You know, I get a ton of tickets like that. People ask, believe it or not, I get a lot of .NET tickets, uh, and people ask me how can I interact with your API via .NET, uh, which is something that I wish to, to deflect. So more than I do for any other language, I swear I get at least you know 10 tickets a week talking about how can I do random operations with .NET. Uh, so fixing the docs for you. Next thing we talk about is security. And as Morton alluded to, uh, we're moving to OAuth 2, all right? Uh, so basic auth is bad. You don't want uh, clear, clear your passwords in the clear. Uh, and uh, Stevie D, uh, actually, I think we're going to push this very, very short soon. Um, and we're going to have examples in client libraries in multiple languages. So, uh, and that will actually get pushed out uh, Q2, late Q2. So, coming, coming very, very soon. We've got like two months. Cores. So, as Morton also alluded to, uh, we're going to start allowing you to make cross domain requests from the browser. Uh, the reason why we're doing doing cores is because it's more expressive than JSONP, right? Like you get more access to the request verge, you're allowed, you're able to do things. And when you match it up, you get a lot of plus cores. Uh, the possibilities are endless, right? So, you know, a lot of people want to do, they ask me all the time, hey, how can I just create this button that says create a ticket on my website? Well, you can't do that now, right? Uh, but Eventually, we'll be able to get there, and that is coming late Q2 2013. Uh, API usage. So, a lot of questions I get, especially from our larger customers, even our smaller ones, our Devaris, um, you know, I keep hitting this rate limit. Uh, can I get my account bumped up to, you know, 10,000 requests a minute or something like that, right? Um, which is no, I'm not going to do that, but they want me to actually provide visibility into, you know, I have to go to Hadoop and pull all their information, data from the logs, and I got to make a nice, you know, pivot table to show them that they're only averaging like 20 tickets a minute and all this other stuff. So I figure, hey, to prevent everybody from keep asking me the same question again, as you guys can see a theme that's occurring here, um, we're going to eventually stuff this inside of your, uh, your, your agent interface, right? Um, so you'll be able to, to see, um, you know, broken down by each of the endpoints, data, uh, how many hits that you are having. Uh, eventually you'll be able to see, you know, how many, uh, what your top API usage is uh, per user. Um, you'll be able to see what your last few rate limits were, uh, day and time, so you won't, uh, you know, you'll be able to see the endpoint. And so I don't have to do it. You'll be able to export all this data, um, which will be great. So, um, and that is coming, I don't know, whenever I feel like I get time to do it. As Warren said, it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting. We have the data in place right now. Uh, it's just actually given into this format that's going to be the uh, tough piece. But uh, this is here for you. Um, and last but not least, uh, cookbook. So. One of the things I realized our documentation does very well is it shows you uh, how to do things uh, on, on a very granular level, but it doesn't necessarily tell a great story, right? So I, I've taken a bunch of things that people ask me on a day-to-day -day basis um, and you know, possibly even pay our services team to do um, to put it inside of a, a, a generic cookbook. Um, so building a service dashboard using Gecko board or dashing or any of those things, right? Custom help forms and forms, right? Like, you know, one of our largest, I'll say one of our biggest customers, right? Uh, they're doing the same thing as you're doing, right? Which is they're constantly making the same requests. 
right? Like they don't necessarily know, they didn't implement cash, right? That's one of those things that, you know, it's kind of common practice for, for web development. A lot of people just don't know how to do that stuff, right? So building these forms and, and, and you know, tying in custom data or data from other databases and putting those into custom fields to create a more richer uh, customer service experience. Reporting with the incremental endpoint, right? Like, I guarantee most of the people in this room are probably still using views to, 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 to pull data from, you know, a day ago or give me all the tickets that have changed within the past, like, you know, five minutes or something like that, all right? Well, we actually have an incremental endpoint that gives you a thousand tickets per minute, um, and it only gives you the ones that have changed within that minute, right? So, uh, doing that as opposed to views, because views are very resource intensive for us to, 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 to execute, um, it provides a better overall customer service experience. Creating and searching for users with multiple identities, right? Like people's, even though we have documentation, we have this long, expansive list of, of, of things you can do with our search, people still kind of trip up on, uh, on how to do this stuff, right? Um, using Twilio, right? So building these like, real-time uh, customer service experience uh, with, with triggers and targets. I actually wrote a blog post about that with uh, the guys from Toyota, but this is something that people really want to do. And I can't think of everything, so it's going to be open source, so we need community input uh, for, for you guys to do that. So, um, yeah, so stay tuned. Um, here's a bunch of all of our stuff. I know you guys probably use this already, but um, Developer site. Uh, all the API updates and all the developer updates are at that forum. Just go to the forum, look for API updates. Or follow us on Twitter, or you can email me at apisundus.com. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> What's the transition plan for OAuth 2? Timeline. When, when do I have to go do something? <laughs> That's a very good question. So the question is, uh, what is the transition plan for, for OAuth? More uh, specifically, when are you going to when are we going to disable basic auth? So so we don't ever disable things. <laughs> if you've noticed from the V1 to V2 transition, um, but we would strongly encourage you uh, for a long time for a very long time. Uh, to uh, to switch, and we'll we'll make sure that it's a very easy transition. Um, we're actually probably going to be working on the documents tomorrow and stuff like that, or over the next couple of weeks. So it'll be a very very easy transition for you. Any other questions? Man, easy crowd. It's beautiful. <laughs>